The standard monohybrid cross in which two individuals that differ in one trait are bred to assess the inheritance patterns of that trait is a good way to illustrate Mendel's principle of segregation. In order to illustrate the other pattern Mendel discovered, which is independent assortment, two traits need to be followed at the same time. Because what the principle of independent assortment states is that when two traits are passed into an offspring, the combination of alleles received at one genetic locus is independent of the combination of alleles received at the other locus. Any number of model organisms can be used to illustrate this pattern. In fruit flies, there is a mutation called antennapedia, which causes the flies to grow legs on their head in place of antenna. This is a recessive trait, so like the vestigial wing allele introduced in the test cross video, an individual who has two wild-type alleles for this trait will express the normal wild-type antenna phenotype, as will any heterozygous individual. Only homozygous recessive individuals will show the antenna pedia phenotype. To demonstrate the principle of independent assortment, we can set up a test cross involving both antenna pedia and vestigial wing mutants. A cross that follows two traits is called a dihybrid cross. As with the monohybrid cross, the first step in performing a dihybrid cross is to pair two individuals that are true breeding for the trait being studied. This can either be between two flies who each possess only one of the mutations, or between a totally wild type individual and one expressing both recessive traits. A punted square is still a good way to evaluate the probability of different allele combinations arising from a dihybrid cross, but because we are tracking two traits, the square needs to be larger. Given two traits of interest, an individual can produce four allele combinations. If, as in this case, the individual is homozygous for the traits, all the combinations will be identical, but it is important to keep in mind that these four pairs represent the actual four possible gametes that can be produced assuming these genes are not linked on a chromosome. With the first big A paired with each little v making two possibilities, and the second big A paired with each v to make the third and fourth possibilities. Of course, Mendel didn't know about genes and alleles and gametes, but the random sorting of unlinked genes into gametes is what his principle of independent assortment captured. The gametes possible from the second parent are listed on the other side of the square. Then, the merging of each possible gamete is shown within the square itself. With four combinations for each parent, the actual square has a total of 16 boxes. Filling out the square reveals the same pattern seen in a monohybrid cross between two true breeding individuals. That is, the entire F1 generation is heterozygous and exhibits the wild type phenotype for both traits. Again, as with the monohybrid cross, the next step is to cross two of the heterozygous individuals from the F1 generation to observe the segregation patterns in the F2 generation. The punted square is set up the same way, with the four allele combinations from each parent placed along the columns and rows of the square. These are then used to fill in the boxes. Given the dominant nature of the wild type alleles for these traits, there are four different phenotypes possible in the offspring. First, individuals could be wild type for both traits. This occurs for any individual who has at least one wild type allele for both traits, represented here as big A underscore big V underscore. Looking at the square, we see there are nine combinations that fit this description, meaning that they are either homozygous dominant or heterozygous for both traits. The next phenotype pairing possible is normal antenna combined with vestigial wings. This is possible with at least one wild type of antenna allele combined with two recessive wing alleles. Three of the 16 boxes have this pattern. Next is the wild type wing with a mutant antenna. There are also three of these in the square. This leaves one final box containing the double homozygous recessive combination. This ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 predicted by the pundit square is found when actual crosses are done. With just over 50% of the offspring having the wild type phenotype for both traits, around 20% each having one or the other recessive trait, and the final 6% being double recessive. And it was the consistency with which this ratio appears when tracking two traits that led Mendel to discover the principle of independent assortment. These patterns hold for larger numbers of unlinked traits, but they get difficult to track with a punted square. A three-trait square has 64 boxes, 
eight different phenotype possibilities, and the ratio is 27 to 9 to 9 to 9 to 3 to 3 to 3 to 1. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.